The character Mandy in Eyes Wide Shut is often discussed and debated on the level of whether she was murdered or just died of an overdose, but to me that plot point is a bit of a red herring. I find her role in the story much more interesting in terms of generalised themes about the fate of financially struggling prostitutes desperately selling their bodies to coke fueled rich guys. Part of this is that Mandy appears to have a very important personal secret that has strong implications regarding the entire story and which affects the other characters. I'll gradually lay out the evidence first and then, well, let's see if the evidence leads you to a similar conclusion. First up, Mandy's story seems to be cross-symbolised with the character Domino, a hooker who propositions Bill later on in the film. Mandy's story is also partially played out in the Somerton Mansion scene, which is arguably a dream sequence, but I'm not going to go into that here. She apparently sacrifices herself to save Bill, and is suggested to have been raped afterward. She got her brains fucked out. Period. Yeah, sexually and narcotically, it seems. So anyway... Here's some bits of vague evidence for you to consider. Bill goes to Domino's apartment twice, once with her and once when only her roommate is there and he finds out that Domino was HIV positive. These are studio constructed sets so none of the props are accidental. On both occasions a toddler's blue pram is positioned right outside the door to Mandy's apartment. As far as I can tell there's only one other instance of a pram in the film and that's here in this street scene, again constructed set. And again, a blue pram. But I don't think it's the same prop used again. The wide shots of New York streets are real, but the rest of the street scenes of the film are constructed. So all of the props, the street signs, the actors, the vehicles, everything is placed deliberately in these scenes. In Domino's apartment, I don't see any prop evidence of a child living there, except perhaps the stack of Christmas presents in the bathtub. Those could be presents for a child, but they also might be presents given to Domino or her roommate by various clientele who pay regularly for their sexual services. And the same might be true of all the Christmas cards. Also regarding children, Bill himself is very disconnected from his own daughter. He's a minimalist father who leaves all of the grooming to his wife. Even at the end of the day, when he has some time to spend with his daughter, he instead watches Alice helping her learn to read. He doesn't do it himself. Meanwhile, at the office, he gives more attention and interest to a young boy, so maybe he wanted a son, not a daughter. Now, all of these bits of evidence so far may seem disconnected, but they will all start to come together later, so bear with me. Next up is a short series of apparent continuity errors that make amusing sense thematically. Dr. Bill calls up the daughter of a dead client who came onto him in an earlier scene. It seems he wants to meet up with her for a sexual encounter. But her fiancé answers the phone, and Bill's fantasy comes to an end. During the cuts back and forth, a pen and some rubber bands keep moving position on Bill's desk. Now, to see this properly requires the full-frame release of the film, which is available on DVD, but it was stupidly cropped out for the Blu-ray releases. Uh, For some reason, they've gone and done that with all these Kubrick films. They've taken what were mostly four three-framed movies, and they've clipped the top and bottom of them to make them widescreen, thus removing a lot of important details in some of the shots. Now this pen and rubber band thing, it isn't actually an accident because in the final shot, Bill is looking disappointed and he has one of the rubber bands wrapped around the fingers and thumb of his left hand. That's not an accident. He's been playing with the pen and the rubber bands between shots. We just didn't see him do it explicitly. And that's why they're moving about in a a series of what appears to be continuity errors. So, are you confused about the meaning on that? Well, Bill was hoping to have sex, and he'd not long found out that Domino was HIV positive, and so, phallic pen and rubber protection, of course, also suggests how horny he was as well. So, it's quite a, a funny metaphor, really. So, we've got prams associated to Domino, Bill's disconnection from his own daughter and contraception preoccupation for Bill. So let's put all of that momentarily aside now and go back to the issue of Mandy herself. Now something we never get to find out in the film, at least not explicitly, is what really happened between Mandy and the rich party host Ziegler in his bathroom before Bill Harford was brought in. Did she really just overdose herself, or did Ziegler deceptively drug her so that she would become a semi-conscious ragdoll for his own sexual pleasures? 
Being that Ziegler later claimed she was a prostitute, she may have drugged herself simply because she was an addict or she may have done it to make her own paid-for physical exploitation by Ziegler more bearable in the moment. It could even have been a suicide attempt, either of the serious attempt or cry-for-help variations. In terms of Ziegler himself, I think a key question is whether he had sex with her before her overdose or whether he did the deed while she was out for the count, which borders on rape, the severity depending on what kind of advanced consent had been made, if any. I'm not sure on the legalities of that kind of situation, I'll bet it's a minefield. Something possibly suggestive of how Ziegler views her as a ragdoll is that when Bill asks what her name is, Ziegler struggles to remember, or at least he appears to. What's your name? Uh, Mandy. Mandy. From the newspaper article later on, it turns out her name is Amanda, so maybe Ziegler reflexively altered her name, calling her Mandy instead of Amanda, hoping that Bill wouldn't find out later who she really is. If he'd completely changed her name, then Bill might not have connected the news article with her death near the end of the story. Another suggestion that Ziegler is lying about his account of what happened before Bill came into this bathroom and how long she has been unconscious for during the overdose is that he vigorously shakes his head as he struggles to answer Bill's questions. What did she take? A speedball or a snowball or whatever the hell they call it. You know, it's, 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 it's heroin and coke. Anything else? A couple of drinks, nothing really. Some champagne, that was it. How long has she been like this? Well, maybe five minutes, six minutes, something like that. After Mandy is awake and appears to be well, Ziegler really starts to show his priorities. Towering over her threateningly, leaning in aggressively with hands on hips, shaking his head like an angry dad, and talking as if the whole incident was her fault and not his own. And she apologises. Well, that was really one hell of a scare you gave us, kiddo. Sorry. Now fixing his image in a mirror because uh, his own public reputation, if she happens to die, that, that's his priority, not her life. Now he wants to get rid of her, but Bill advises to keep her there for another hour, though I seriously doubt that he does that. Is it okay if I get some clothes on her and get her out of here? All right. I'd keep her here for another hour. Another hour? Okay. He's also rubbing his wedding ring during the conversation, divorce being a potential blowback if the encounter is made known to his wife. And finally he tells Bill, I can't thank you enough for this. You, uh, you saved my ass. Ha, <laughs> you saved my ass, not her ass. And finally his commanding hand gesture toward Bill to keep his mouth shut just as happened in the orgy sequence. Oh, I know I don't have to mention this, but this is just between us. Or if you say a single word to anyone, there will be the most dire consequences for you and your family. If you're wondering if Ziegler is Red Cloak, then yes, go watch my video on the subject. Oh, one more thing. As all of these anxiety-inducing and potentially reputation-destroying scenarios are played out in the bathroom, the situation is being mirrored at the foreplay level of Sandor Savost hitting on Bill's wife downstairs. So we're seeing the allure of sexual attraction there, and we're seeing the consequences of irresponsible sexual behaviour upstairs. Lots and lots of mirroring of events going on throughout this movie. Narrative points aside, we have a prominent visual detail in this set. There's a painting of a woman on the bathroom wall and the arrangement mirrors Mandy herself. Both are naked and slumped back against the colour red, the most sexual of colours. And for a brief moment, both the painting and Mandy on the chair are in shot at the same time here. A red couch is also present when the costume shop owner's daughter has been likely prostituting herself to a couple of businessmen. Dark red again, just like the one Mandy is on. And hey, there's a red couch in Bill's living room too where we first see Bill's daughter. Now, in my view, the scene of Milich's daughter being sexually exploited is in part a representation of Bill's worries that his own daughter will grow up to be a victim of exploitation too. Young lady, it is my daughter! And couldn't you see she is a child? See my video, The Children of Eyes Wide Shut, for more on that kind of worm subject. But also on Bill's red couch is the babysitter, who perhaps Bill is attracted to, 
although hilariously he can't remember her name. What's the name of the babysitter? Ross. What kind of a dad leaves his daughter with a babysitter he knows so little about? All right, so you may be now thinking, well, you know, this is all interesting stuff, but isn't there supposed to be a big revelation about Mandy in this video? Well, yes, we've got the conceptual foreplay out the way, so now let's get down to the penetrating twist. The painting, which as far as I know was painted by Kubrick's wife, Christiane, is framed in close-ups of Ziegler during the conversation. And we can see that the woman in the painting is heavily pregnant. Anxious Ziegler's face is positioned where it overlaps the phallic region and the pregnancy bump. Combined with the parallel between the painting and Mandy, I think the implication is quite blatant that Mandy is pregnant and carrying Ziegler's child. Look at the way he's framed against that naked woman. It, it's, it really stands out. It's so specific. Or at the very least, it may just be his fear that she's pregnant. There's definitely something going on with the pregnancy issue here relating to Mandy. Ziegler doesn't seem like the kind of guy who is disciplined enough to use a condom, does he? No, he likes it raw dog, of course. This issue of wanting maximum sensation, carefree sexual pleasure with people who may as well be pieces of furniture runs multiple risks. Sexual disease, of course, the HIV issue that gives Bill a big scare later on to the point where he doesn't take up an offer of sexual services from Mandy's gorgeous roommate, and unwanted pregnancies, hence the pram by Domino's door. Being aware of both STDs and the risk of pregnancy, Bill called up this woman with full intention of using a Jonathan. Both of those contraception risks can lead to even more bad consequences than the short-term inconvenience. If Domino is HIV positive and gets pregnant, then her baby can be HIV from birth too. Other clients can catch it from her and pass it on to their wives. If Bill got HIV and ended up with AIDS and died, his daughter would be fatherless, a major trauma for her. If Domino has a child of her own, then she could die and her kid might end up in an orphanage, a double trauma that could ruin the kid's life. As for Mandy, would Ziegler be there to help out and raise the kid? Of course not. At best, she might receive a little bit of financial support from him on the side to shut her up, but not much beyond that. More likely, he'd abandon her and the child, denying any connection and leaving his own child to a poverty upbringing and the lack of an essential father figure. For all we know, her overdose here could have been a ploy to cause a miscarriage, but that would require that he knew she was pregnant from her in advance. It could be something he already knows. And we don't have enough information on their history to know about that, but if you go look at my video Red Cloak Unmasked, there's some extra information there suggesting that he has a long-term involvement with Mandy. So yeah, it's all kind of a little bit morbid, all this, all these subjects, but you know, these are realistic issues. This isn't the kind of conspiracy issues that people generally talk about with this movie. This is basic real stuff. When you get guys with a lot of money who just want to bang lots of women and they run the risk of catching STDs and they run the risk of having illegitimate tr children and then trying to cover it up and trying to get the mother and kid out of their life so that it doesn't damage their reputation and all that stuff. This is basic real world stuff. And the movie communicates a, a pretty strong warning about it. Okay, so that's a wrap. I hope you found all this interesting. If you want to know more about Eyes Wide Shut, then watch these videos of mine on the subject and check out the longer studies of the film on my website, collativelearning.com, as well as my most recent sale videos, which include these long form items on Silence of the Lambs, Blair Witch Project, Empire Strikes Back, Fight Club, and so on. Or you can become a Patreon supporter for access to some of those as well. Until next time, happy hunting and stay free.